it was about two, three o'clock in the morning. I went to bed. You know, took in the essentials, shut the door, went Pat, to bed. Passed out. Huh? Well, I had a hard time fa- falling off yeah. because I was just so wound from. Uh, you're looking at almost 900 miles of straight through. So I'm I'm laying there. What I had was I had a fold up bed, roll away bed. Up against a room where we had punched a, a, a doorway through uh, to create a study off of our, what is now the master bedroom. I was laying right up against the wall. The bed was right up against the wall. My feet were right by the doorway. Now, I, I have had numerous times in my life this sensation when I'm asleep of being touched. It's not real comfortable, but I can't say that I've been damaged at all. Mm. But I have had hands on me. I've had some type of body next to me, not sexually or anything like that, just sitting right next to me. You could, well, you could I, feel the presence. I could feel it. And coming out of that was very difficult because I'd be asleep, you know, but I would feel this and I was trying to wake up. When I'd wake up, I was sweating, you know. It was like a nightmare, you might say. Okay, well, let's grant that that's a nightmare. Well, this time, after this trip to Albuquerque, <clears throat> this night in 2006, I'm not asleep yet. And I'm just laying there on my back. I, For whatever reason, uh, I keep a pistol uh, close to me. Hmm. I've always been like that. Now I'm going to tell you something that's very meaningful about that. I'm not. I'm not a violent person, and God, I, I pray that I never have to use it. It's pro- it's protection. It's protection, pure and simple. And I'm a good shot. I'm a very good instinctive shot. Okay, so I'm laying there with my hands knitted behind my head under the pillow. I, I can feel the pistol next to the back of my hand. All of a sudden, I feel a push on the bottom of my feet. Now, this time, I'm not asleep. This is weird. And my eyes flew open. There were two gray images at the foot of the bed. And... Faster than I can describe. You don't tell me you 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 drew the gun on them. I drew the gun and shot. I nailed the sucker in the doorway. The taller one was in, like in front of the doorway, and there was a little bit shorter one that was in front of me. You shot. I whatever this it. was. Whatever it was, I drilled it. Bullet thirty eight right into the door frame. Was it effect? It went right through it. Went. I don't know. See that as the flash went off, you know, it's a snub nose that I had. Flash went off, you know, it's the acrid smell, the flash. I'm oh, yeah. blinded by the flash because it was pitch black in there, and they're not there. You know you hit it, though. Well, if it was there, I hit it. Well, I mean, was there a gunshot in the house afterwards? Did you see anything? Yeah, the bullet. It lodged. Sitting, it lodged in that doorway. Oh. I had my friend come over that does the uh, magnetic interference uh, research. I showed him because I was spooked as hell after this one. It's very possible, Rick, that these things are dimensional and it went right through them. We're coming up on a break. It'll take uh, Michael in Los Angeles. Hey, Michael, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, uh, yeah, just a couple observations. I just sound off on my disappointment over this latest uh, stimulus package. Uh-huh. You're not alone. <laughs> Here we are. It's, it's, by the time it gets out of the conference committee this weekend, it's over a 1,000 pages that, you know, whatever the members of Congress will be asked to vote on. Average worker will get about $13 in his paycheck. And, you know, no one, I mean, when you get over a 1,000 pages, no one really knows what's in there, and members will be voting on something that obviously they haven't read. Absolutely and, right. And, and, uh, and a pattern of, you know, the, the bill they voted on before, the bailouts with no oversight, uh, the regulations of the financial mar- markets that melted down had no oversight, that Bush's deficits that weren't checked, 
And it looks like it's more of the same. It looks like we're right back to after the last three, you know, waves of financial chaos. Here we go again. You know, here we go again. Yeah, and, so, and what's the plan next? What can they do next after this comes out and nothing happens? And, and like nothing happened with the uh, bank bailouts. Uh, and why they're hurry, you'd think that after all they'd been through, that they would take the time to get it right this time. And, yep. and I, 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 dollars for donuts, uh, it, they, they're, they're not going to get it right this time, and we're going to be... What do they do after this is passed? What will happen? I have long said that we need to let the free marketplace solve its own dilemma, do away with the IRS, put money back in the hands of Americans, go to a use tax. Uh, that way we tax the billions and maybe trillions of dollars of illicit drug money that is flowing into this country because that's being used to buy goods and services. At least it'll get taxed this way. It's not being declared. And uh, and start, you know, letting Americans spend the money they want to spend on things. Well, they, and they would. Well, you know, if the, if, as long as, you know, the IRS can lawfully audit us, how come our own government hasn't been audited, whether it be their financial reports, which is all of their budgets, not just the... Well, you know buckets. why. You know why they haven't been audited. They just, uh, they're above it. When, it. when it comes to those big people, you know, it's all red ink is okay, but when it comes to ordinary people, it's a matter of vault cash, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't, I, you know what? I want this to succeed, and I want this president to succeed. I just don't think this stimulus package will work. That's my guess, and you feel the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we shall see. Yeah, and I and I, ho I look forward to your coverage of it. You do outstanding coverage. I, I can't miss it. We were way ahead of the curve on this one, weren't we? I can't turn it off. <laughs> I know, me either. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. We're coming up to this break, and then we'll come back for uh, more open lines uh, this day. You know, we've uh, changed the uh, format of the show tonight uh, because of the tragedy near Buffalo where this uh, Continental Airlines commuter train crashed, killing 48 people uh, in that plane and one on the ground. Very sad story. And uh, so we flex the show a little bit. I'll be back in a moment. More open lines on Coast to Coast AM. On our next Coast to Coast program, guess what? Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, open lines. Oh, anything can happen. Back with uh, more of your calls on Coast to Coast AM. Okay, back to the calls. Let's go to British Columbia and Canada. Lorian on the International Nine. Hi, Lorian. Hi, how's it going? It's going it's, well. It's nice. Lori. Lori. Lorianne, actually. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about those two satellites that crashed. Strange story, wasn't it? Yes. Like, my question is, do you think that could have been, like, ships? Because we're talking about uh, fighting and everything? Well, you know, I don't know. It could, it could have been, but I think they were satellites. You know, Richard C. Hoagland, our science advisor, head of the EnterpriseMission.com, he thinks there's something else going on up there. He really does. But uh, the official word was that a defunct Russian satellite smashed into a private satellite from this country in uh, pieces everywhere. What do you think? I don't know. I think it's kind of fishy in a way, especially after listening tonight to yeah. the show. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, that's you know? a good point. We're not done looking into that story either. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lorianne. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Alex in New Jersey. Welcome to Coast to Coast. You're on the air with us. Hi, Alex. Uh, good morning, George. How are you? Good. Thanks. Uh, George, I'm calling. I'd like to share with yourself and all, all the listeners what I believe is a solution, the remedy to this entire economic chaos, recession, whatever you want. I wish somebody would have the answer. Uh, well, all I ask is kindly, uh, listeners throughout the United States and internationally, lend me your ears, please, for two, three minutes the most. Two minutes I'll give you. Thank, thank you, George. Okay. Here I go. Everybody knows, everybody heard that Congress approved not too long ago $700 billion. Now, last that we heard was half of that money, in other words, $350 billion is gone. Half of it went to save the banks and the insurance companies, so they have $350 billion left. I say to fix this problem for everybody, all you need is one, one billion dollars. And they can keep the other 349 billion for themselves. 